Hello, good day, and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about the switch statement, and we're going to see that the switch statement builds nicely on top of what you already know about the if statement, which we covered in the previous video. Towards the end of our example, we're going to be looking at something in the switch state that you can do with a switch statement, which is called fall through. And don't worry, we'll cover it if you never heard or thought about fall through. Now. What is a switch statement? Well, a switch statement allows you to have multiple branches or paths in your um, take, one of any number of um, paths in your code. And you want to think about it uh, as a replacement or a, uh, equivalent to a multi-condition if statement. So here's an example. Let's say I had a integer value which represented the day of the week. So I'm going to use zero to mean Sunday, one for Monday, two for Thursday, three for Wednesday, and so on. And I get to six, it's gonna be Saturday. And I wanted to, I wanna print out a value, a message, depending on the current value um, of that day of the week. So if it's zero, I might say, oh, rest up, it's Sunday. And if it's Monday, I say, welcome back, first day of the week. And if it's Wednesday, you know, represented by three, I think, um, you know, hey, hum day, we still have a little bit more to go to close out the week. and Friday, hey, time to party, let's have some fun. So in that case, I can use several if statements or rather a component if, if, else if, you know, so I can say if value is zero, then Sunday, else if value is one, then Monday, and so on, I can keep going that way. And you can see what that looks like versus if we use a switch statement. Now let me get out of presentation mode here and just jump over here to the documentation for Golang. And I'm gonna go to language specification, and then I'm gonna scroll down here, and you're gonna see it says switch statement. So this is the formal specification for switch statement, and you can see that Golang has two of them. A switch statement is either an expression switch statement or a type switch statement. We're not gonna worry about type switch statement because we haven't covered types yet. Um, that's in future, like three chapters away. So an expression switch statement basically looks like this. It starts with the keyword switch, then there's a, either a simple statement followed by a semicolon, and then an expression which you're gonna evaluate, and then open parentheses, like literal open parentheses. And then these are the expression clause, right? Case clause. An expression case clause look like an expression case switch colon and then the statement list so list the statement but what does an expression switch case look like it's just keyword case and an expression list and again followed by you know and, and it could either be a literal um, default we're gonna see that in a minute but you know you hear some examples of that but let's just jump into our code and take a look so here I am in our chapter two, and I've copied the previous um, stuff we were working on, chapter uh, section seven into eight, and then I start off my editor, and this is the code we had. Now, if you remember, we were playing with if, and this is our multi-condition if statement here. Um, we were um, looking at, you know, printing out different values. So we say if something, else if, and this is what I'm talking about. If we instead were talking about day of the week, for example, and um, if I want to do randomize on a day of the week, well, I want zero through six, which is the same as one through seven, seven days of the week. We're talking about switch statement. And, and maybe what I want to be able to do is, you know, print line, uh, print line, and I want to say what day of the week it is. So this is going to be Sunday, and I want this to be if this is equals, to zero, then it's Sunday, else if is equals to one, if day is equals to one, then I want you to print print line Monday. And I'm going to get rid of this one and then I'm going to say else I know it's Saturday. And we're talking about here right 
and I'm going to copy and paste this multiple times. So paste, 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 paste. I don't know how many, how many do I have. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then that's 6. So that seems to be enough. And 3, 4, 5. And then 6. So we should, this should be Friday. I'm going to work backwards. Thursday. This is Wednesday. And this is Tuesday. And that seems to be fine. So if I run this code now, go run main to see some random days essentially get printed out. Okay, so that looked like that is working just fine. And this is what a statement for that would look like. Now I can totally make my statement more ugly and do something like silly as else, then do the if inside of there, like that, and say, if first, if I know it's not Sunday, then it has to be some other day of the week, and then I keep testing. But notice all oh, my if statement is just indenting, and so I wouldn't want to do it nested like that. Instead, I would use else if because that's just cleaner. All right, so we know else if work, and it's it's pretty straight. You know, it's not as as indented and harder to to look at. But what would the switch statement do for us? Remember, when you use a switch statement, you can simply do switch on day essentially um, so let's do switch on day let's go to switch on day and that's our uh, thing and then we want to do case zero colon and same thing here case one colon and when this is all um, formatted properly, you'll see what I mean. Case three colon case four colon. That's how you you separate your um, statement list. Case five, and then here you do default. Default is like an else in an if statement. And so now when I let this save and format, now you can see switch on day, right? So this is our expression to evaluate. And then depend on the value of day, if it matches case one, so you can imagine this is if the day is equal to zero. So the thing with a switch statement is that it doesn't allow you to do like the less than and so on. You actually have to match a specific value. So in this case, we're matching, <coughs> it's an equals match, right? So if case is equal to zero, zero, if day is equal to zero, then do this Sunday, on, if it's one, so on. And so we can run this again, and we get Saturday when we have a value that is not one, two, three, four, or five. We know that value must be six. So we don't actually have to put a case for it, we just do default because that's the only one that's left. Now, um, this is nice, and, and you could put multiple statements. You don't have to put just one statement because the case statement themselves, the case statement themselves act um, like a a demarcation between um, what you need to do. So you don't have to have to put like a break or end or anything like that. So uh, like you might have to do in C if you know C. Uh, if we can get a Tuesday to come up here, we can see multiple statement. Of course, if it was wrong, I would have gotten an error message um, from the compiler. But yeah, can get Tuesday to come up. Huh, Tuesday, come on, Tuesday. Let's get a Tuesday, can we get a Tuesday? Oh, really random, but oh, there we go. So there was Tuesday, so I was able to execute my two statements. So you could have multiple statements, okay? Um, actually, let's leave that. So that's fine. So that is all it really is to a case statement. Very, very simple. Put the expression and then, you know, the cases that match. And that's it. 
Now the only other thing that you can, well, not the only thing, one of the things you can do, remember there are multiple types of case statements and I haven't covered those other ones. I've covered the simple one that is meant to be like a replacement for if condition, okay? So there's one other thing you can do. So you can say, for example, when it comes to Friday, I want to fall through on Friday Party on Friday to, to Saturday. Maybe my Friday, I like to party until Saturday. So when it's Friday for me, it means that, hey, I'm going to start partying on Friday until Saturday. So with this, remember I said that the case is as a demarcation between the statement. But when you have the fall through, you're instructing Go to say, hey, if I'm in case five, I want you to execute this case and then go on to the next case. And so it's almost as if this is not there, okay? Um, and so if we run and we ever get for Friday, we'll see that oh, it's going to print out the message both for Friday and Saturday. Now that I'm looking for Friday, I'm getting Tuesday. All right, let's see. Friday, where are you? Let's do Friday. Come on, Friday. Come on, Friday. Ah, there we go. So party on Friday to Saturday because it's fell through, okay? So that is your fall through. Now, this is a contrived example to show you fall through. Um, the number of opinions out there from very experienced programmers and some don't think that how oh, uh, you should have fall through in a case statement or you shouldn't use it. Um, uh, very few cases in where you would really need to use it. Go makes it a more explicit that you have a fall through then say C, for example. And since we are talking about C, I'm not going to show how C does it, blah, 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 blah. So that's not the point. The point is this feature is there for you, but use it with care. Um, you may not think or see now why having a fall through might be error prone, but essentially what you're saying is I want to come into case five, do whatever is for case five, and also do whatever is for this default case. And so having this keyword to show you explicitly that's what you intend is good. That's why some people didn't like it because other languages don't have an explicit fall through keyword, for example. All right. So you can put fall through in many other places. So for example, if Monday, um, you know, Sunday is your workout day, for example, you might say, hey, workout on Sunday and then on Monday, you know, workout on Sunday and Monday, and you want to fall through there, right? And so that works also. And so we have two fall through in our um, in our thing. Our, there it is. Workout on Sunday and Monday. And if we get Monday, of course, all we see is Monday. We don't see anything else but Monday. Wednesday, of course. Uh, you can keep playing with this, but I hope you're convinced that if you ever get Monday as a day, um, it will simply show you Monday only. Just like, you know, Wednesday or any other days. Uh, come on, Monday. Come on, Monday. <laughs> All right. Can get a Monday. Can get a Monday. Can get a Monday. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah, it is a Monday. All right. So it works just as you would expect. It came into this case, and then there's no fall through, so that was all there is to it. Now, one of the other nice things about the case statement in the Go language, like maybe a language like Python also, um, again, not in the language like C, is that your um, day can also be a string. So you can take, check a string condition. So here, I'm going to enclose these in quote and make them string. And so I don't have to test a numeric value only. I can also test a string. And so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to say, what if our value is stored as a string? And it could be any complex string, right? You know, it doesn't have to be one character long. But of course, my type here is an integer right for now. So I'm going to use... Um, there's a str conv that ascii to integer to ascii function. 
and I'm going to use that. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to still call and randomly get a number and then I'm going to take that number and turn it into a string. So that is the integer, take an integer to an ASCII. You know, we covered the old how you represent value, so ASCII. So turn that into a string and so now date is a string, day is a string and that's what I'm comparing. And this should work just the same way. Bam, 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 bam. Okay? And I'm comparing strings here, by the way. Okay? Yeah, there we go. Okay. So I hope this simple example show you how you can use a switch statement instead of an if statement if it's necessary or if your if statement can be converted to a switch statement or is getting too long. If you look at the uh, example um, documentation, if you look at the examples in the documentation, you can see more elaborate uses of the switch statement. So for example, you can take out this expression at the top and then put it here and say if they is you know equal, so you can be explicit about your ex your condition that you're te you're testing, and that allows you to do sort of what we were doing before when we were saying that hey we're at age. Let's take this out, and we had one fifty, and we said if age is less than or equals is less than 18 then you're too young to sign up okay we did a print line there we didn't have follow through and then you know case age is less than equals to 60 less than 65 you know, we had some message which I can't remember, but okay. So that was that. What would that is what that would mean? An age was less than you know a hundred. Then we had some other message, but. Do print line on that, and then case. Oh, we can default now. We can default because if if you're less than eighteen, then you do that. If not, then are you less than uh, sixty-five, less than a hundred, and else you're over one hundred years old, right? And so we can run that and right we get it works the same way. So a switch statement can be used to replace that uh, multiple if else if else if else and probably a little bit less typing because you still would have to do if else here and put the condition so you replace that if else with a a case okay and the thing is one other nice thing to note is that in go at least you can put the case to default anywhere and it still works um, as you would expect okay um, but is for let's say you want to be you want to always put your default at the bottom because it's clearly expressed your intent that all the other thing that came before it did not work and so the default is the last one okay um, so if you notice I'm still getting to um, the ones at the bottom like you're you know you are not a hundred yet and so on because even though that came before the default um, it worked in Go Lang, but in other languages it would be a surprise. It it might not work as you intend. Plus the look of it is kind of weird. It's like, oh, my default case come before all the things I can possibly test. 
So you want the default to express the intent that all these other cases were tested and then I, I'm, I'm gonna execute the default if none of those match, right? So always keep your default as the last statement and try not to use fall through unless you, tell, you understand it thoroughly and you absolutely need it and you should definitely put some documentation around it. So that's it for the switch statement. In conclusion, the switch statement can be used in place of your multiple if statement. Those are your if condition, else if condition, else if condition, or even worse, the if condition, else, and then inside of there you put a, an if statement, which I don't know why you would do that, but instead of doing that, it's probably a little bit more elegant, clearer of your intent using a switch statement. I would say if you have a if state a switch statement, if you have if statement with yeah. four distinct conditions or paths you can take, then that is the line that I would draw and say at that point you can either use a switch or still use a if, but if you end up with five conditions, definitely go to a switch statement. And we saw fall through and we said it out um, it should be used with care. Um, I have used it in some embedded programming a long, long time ago, but I've not had any reason to really use it since. I came up with a contrived example to show you how you might use fall through, but just remember that um, it's something you should use with care because if you have unintentional fall through or somebody doesn't follow your logic, you can have some bugs that are hard to find. Okay, with that said, um, keep practicing, subscribe, keep spreading the word, if you're subscribed, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm not going to stop thanking you for taking time out of your wonderful life to hit that subscribe button and coming back to view the videos. And I'm not going to st um, stop thanking you for spreading the word to your friends and families and maybe your enemies too. But So thank you for all of that. And I appreciate all the feedback. And please continue watching the videos. And see you in the next video.